Welcome to the Grok Shop and part three in my series, The Cody Compendium. In this video, we'll be evaluating the various OS options for Raspberry Pi as they apply to our specific use case scenario of Cody deployment in a home theater environment. Of course, all good decisions begin with a good understanding of your requirements. For this project, we absolutely must have lightweight operating system, low memory and CPU usage, easy installation, currently maintained OS, and it must be supported by Kodi. That simplifies things a bit. Now we can whittle the list down a little further by adding in a couple soft requirements. For example, if the operating system was purpose-built just for Kodi, that might make things a little nicer. Um, if we could modify the OS, add on packages and whatnot, that would also be nice. So we'll make these soft requirements because you could get by pretty good without these. And then there were three. Now of these three, two of them are very similar. I'm talking about OpenELEC and LibreELEC. And uh, basically, Libre is a recent fork off OpenELEC, I think uh, 2016. And um, it was a pretty effective mutiny. And as well, OpenELEC suffers some security issues. So, all right, all right, all right. Decision comes down to these two guys, OSMC and LibreELEC. Let's take a closer look and see which one's best suited for our application of Kodi. We'll just pop the SD card into our computer using the adapter. Take note of the drive letter, of course. I'll start out by installing LibreELEC. I'll be doing this on Windows. As you can see, you can easily do it on Mac or Linux as well. Nice thing about LibreELEC and OSMC is they provide a tool for burning an image to USB or SD card. And here with the LibreELEC tool running, you just select your platform. It'll be Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 for us. And then um, just select the recommended stable version is what I would recommend unless for some reason you need a different version. So you just click the download button and select a file destination. And then when that finishes, just select your SD card drive. Then it's as simple as hitting the right button and you're off to the races. Hats off to the LibreELEC team for making it so easy peasy. And when that finishes, we could just close her out and take a look at the SD drive folder if you like. Make sure you got stuff on there. It's not still empty for some reason. Okay, recall that from part two, I'm using an Ace Max wireless keypad and mouse uh, with my Raspberry Pi Kodi. You can use a standard keyboard and mouse if you prefer, um, at least for the initial configuration, you're going to need something. Uh, either way, just pop the SD card into the Pi and we'll be ready for boot up. So yeah, less than 30 seconds, we have booted, not bad at all. One big difference between LibreELEC and OSMC is LibreELEC will boot right into Kodi and all the configs done within Kodi. And um, that's neither really good nor bad. I didn't, I didn't see a huge advantage either way, um, but it does show how with LibreELEC, they're really just keeping you in Kodi. And with OSMC, there is some operating system configuration outside of Kodi. Now 
Now with Liberlec, I noticed some problems on that initial boot trying to use the wireless keypad and mouse. So I ended up going back to the old standby wired mouse and keyboard just to get the initial config going. After I think the first uh, boot, the second boot and beyond, um, I was able to use the wireless keypad. Not sure what the problem is there, maybe driver related or whatnot. So it's a little annoying, but not a huge problem and gives you another reason yet again to keep that old keyboard and mouse handy, right? Okay, so now we can set our host name. I would definitely not keep the default in case you uh, have multiple Cody's or something that won't work. So I'm going to call mine HTPC for home theater PC. If you want to use Wi-Fi, go ahead and select your Wi-Fi network and enter your passphrase. For me, I'll be using a wired Ethernet connection for now. Okay, yeah, so now sharing and remote access, these are servers that run on the OS underneath Kodi. In case you want to make changes to the file system like manually edit your playlists or copy files for another Kodi box, perhaps look at logs, that type thing. You want to have SSH turned on if you're coming in from Linux or if you're using PuTTY from Windows, for example. And uh, Samba is for the Windows file protocol. So if you want to use Windows Explorer to access the file system, Samba needs to be running. Um, I recommend turning them both on now. You don't know if you might need them later unless you know for sure you're not going to need one or the other. I would just turn them both on. What you're looking at here indicates that both are on with the slider to the right. And that's not very obvious. I wish they would make it more obvious. Um, but there is a Kodi add-on for the Liberalex settings, so you can tweak these elsewhere later if you need to. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it as far as the basic config for Liberalex. As you can see, it just drops you right into Kodi, and you can see it's the default skin here for Kodi 17 uh, Krypton, which is called Estuary, I believe it's not very awesome as far as skins go but um, it gets the job done and you can always change that later of course i'm not going to be adding media from my library in this episode i'll be doing that in a future episode but i will be getting into some uh, analysis on the performance here okay so yeah now i'm going to ssh into this liberal at cody box and the user for SSH is root and the default password is liberalec. And uh, we'll just take a quick gander here and see what we can find out about memory and RAM usage. Here's the top command, which shows uh, the one five fifteen minute load average at the top. And then you can see CPU and memory being used by each task here. And this is uh, idling. The Kodi box isn't really doing anything. So we're just looking at uh, how much resources it needs just to sit there and idle. Okay. And then besides the uh, top command, I have a little script which uses um, the top command in addition to the free command. And we'll take a look at that here next and see how that looks. Okay, so as you guys can see, the script I'm running to performance test is called mon.sh. And uh, basically every five seconds, it runs a calculation on memory and CPU usage. And uh, the memory calculation is based on the free command and the CPU calculation is based on the top command. And we're just strictly testing idle performance. So Cody's not playing any movies or any music. This is just what it needs to sit there and idle on the Liberalec OS on the Raspberry Pi 3. Now for the CPU, it reads as a percent, but really what it is, it's a load factor, the same load factor you get at the top of the top command. So the way that works is basically per core, uh, a 1.0, would be uh, a fully maxed pipeline. So for a four core, it's about four, or call it between three and a half and four, which is what you have with the Raspberry Pi 3. So you're looking at what 0.07 to 0.15, it's way, way below 
um, four. So it's a very, very light CPU usage right here, which is what you would expect, which is good. Uh, and the memory at 30%, I mean, to me, that's reading a little higher than I would like to see. But um, Cody's a pretty big program, and you wouldn't necessarily expect it to need a whole lot more memory than what it needs here at idle. But still, it seems kind of high, right? Um, but we'll be running the same test on OSMC and we'll use uh, this test as sort of a comparison for idle resource usage um, to help as a basis for our decision on choosing between these two operating systems. Okay, so moving on to OSMC now. I'll put these links below, of course. Um, the process is basically almost identical as Liberalec. You select your operating system. Um, one difference is their little application is uh, not as um, consolidated. It's got multiple pages. And uh, as you can see, little pull downs and you go onto the next page as you go here. Um, select your device, select your language, and um, it's just not, not quite as clean as the Libra Elect one, I, I, I felt like anyway. Um, but it's, it's still pretty good, pretty easy to use. I just select the um, default latest um, that they make available there. We're going to use SD card, of course, and I'm setting up for wired. OSMC, it's kind of funny they ask you for this right off the bat here, but um, you can easily change the OSMC configuration after the install completes. So this is kind of interesting. You can see my SD card is not showing up. I just had to plug it in all the way and refresh and it popped right up. I thought that was a nice measure of robustness on their part. Okay, as before, if you want, you can check your removable drive folder for your SD card, make sure you got stuff in there, and uh, that checks out. Just uh, pop it into the Raspberry Pi and boot her on up. Okay, this initial boot up time for OSMC, I found to be slightly longer than that for Liberalec, about 10 to 15 seconds longer, but not really a big deal, right? Also, once we get to the data phase entry here, um, I found that the keypad actually worked for OSMC, the wireless keypad, um, on the very first go, which was better than that experience I had with Liberalec. However, um, I still found it kind of preferable to use the old keyboard and, and standard mouse. So I ended up using those just to get through the initial config. So it drops you first into a skin and then kind of backs you back out to a config, which is a little awkward, but um, it all happens without you doing anything, so no big deal. Um, so we're just gonna go through the config here. It wants us to select language and time zone. Presumably the language we entered earlier was for the installer language, not for the Kodi language. So uh, we'll go ahead and set that up here. I'm in the Pacific time zone. And of course, we'll change the machine name. I'll set it up just like I did before. So just as Liberalec had the slider uh, clarity problem, wasn't clear whether left or right was on or off, OSMC has the white box problem. Um, so <laughs> you see these white boxes next to everything and it's not clear what that means, but it says SSH is enabled to start with. So that's good. I checked the box and that made it disable. <laughs> so I uh, go figure, but um, we do want SSH. So um, we'll make sure that's enabled here. With OSMC, you actually have a nice 
post install config area and I'll show that later on. But um, so I'm going to elect to do like my network config and stuff after the install. And then you can just select the skin. You can select the OSMC skin or the classic, which is really the default Cody Krypton skin. I, I choose OSMC skin here, but um, we'll end up getting into skins in another part of the series later. And uh, this OSMC skin kind of becomes irrelevant in that case, unless you really like it. Okay, so yeah, now just to show you guys what configuring OSMC looks like from within Cody. Uh, in this skin, you go to Programs, and then Program Add-ons, and then select My OSMC. In the OSMC skin, it's off the main settings menu. Uh, but this is a nice way to configure OSMC without having to drop into a shell into the underlying OS. And uh, in here, you can see um, they've got different uh, mini apps that you run and the um, for example the network config here wired wireless Bluetooth um, database settings but yeah this whole settings add-on is basically a way to prevent you from having to manually twiddle around in the underlying operating system in OSMC to get new services you use the little shopping cart here which they call the App Store here you can see the different kind of services they have available like Samba. I've already installed it here. As you can see, it says install. And then once you have them installed, you can go to the little gear, which is like the services that are currently running. You can see I've got SSH and Samba both running here. Okay, you can also configure updates and uh, general pie configurations you can do overclocking from within here if you want. So yeah, I thought they did a pretty good job with this config app. Um, there is something similar to this in Liberalec. I didn't show it here. I don't think they call theirs an app store. For, I think they just call it services and you can flip them on and off. Um, but uh, it's basically a similar type add-on um, where you can configure the underlying system there. Alrighty, it's time to get down to the net cutting for OSMC and do some performance testing. For OSMC, the SSH login is user OSMC, password OSMC. Of course, this test is an idle test, so Cody's not doing anything again, and it's the exact same script I used to test Liberalec. So one thing that stands off right off the bat is the lower memory usage. I'm showing around 11% use here as uh, compared to 30% or so for Liberalec. Another interesting observation I had was that OSMC CPU usage continues to drop as time goes on. And you can see a second round of testing here and the CPU uh, usage will actually go all the way to zero, at least as it registers here. Uh, it's got to be pretty, pretty close to zero uh, to show zero. I didn't see that with Liberalec. I saw a stabilization of low CPU usage in that point teen range. Um, but with OSMC, you do see this grind towards zero. So when you take this data of lower CPU usage at idle, lower memory usage at idle, yes, it's a limited data set, but you would have to conclude that OSMC could possibly be a more lightweight operating system than Liberalac. Now, of course, there's other factors involved besides squeezing out that last bit of efficiency. Um, for example, Liberalec seems to be slightly more user-friendly with the install. I would tip my hat to them for that. On the other hand, OSMC is more modifiable to modify the uh, underlying operating system, being able to add packages with these and whatnot, whereas Liberalec's more clamped down. So depending on your use case, you know, if you just want super simple, I would still recommend Liberalec. If you want something a little more power user and possibly more lightweight, go with OSMC. So that's a wrap for this episode of the Cody Compendium and OS selection for Cody on Raspberry Pi. I hope it's been helpful to you guys. Definitely stay tuned as we get into the meat of the series. In the next episode, we'll be discussing grooming your library and preparing to get all your media imported into Cody. That's how it's done. Thanks for watching. Thank you.